We often think that making a significant change in our lives will lead to more happiness. Maybe if I just move house, then I'll be happier. Or when I meet my ideal partner and get married, then I'll be content. But happiness doesn't stem from ticking off big milestone events in our lives. I think true happiness comes from the way we live our lives on a daily basis. It's the little details that really matter. And there's something about how the French live their lives that's really conducive to a happier existence. They have something called l'art de vivre, the art of living. And ever since I moved here from England over 20 years ago, I've been learning about the French lifestyle habits that can help shape our lives and make us feel happier. Here's what the French have taught me. Consider the simple act of living as a form of art. One really obvious thing I noticed about the French is how much importance they place on the arts. Culture is a part of everyday life here. Things like going to museums or art galleries, stopping whatever you're doing to watch street theatre or music, making a point of visiting a local sculpture exhibition, regularly going to the cinema or the ballet. These are cultural traditions that have lasted for generations in France. And it's all about savouring the beauty in life. Slowing down and taking the time to appreciate art in all of its forms. <laughs> Something else the French have taught me is how to wind down after a day of work. They regularly have an apero in town with friends and they prioritise socialisation and real life community. Being a recognised and valued member of a community is one of the keys to living a happy and fulfilled life. The French engage in conversation gracefully, with curiosity, and they take great pleasure from learning from each other's different points of view. There's nothing my French family enjoy more than a good debate around the dinner table. Sometimes these can last for hours and get very noisy, but nobody gets triggered or offended. Even with very different views on something, we usually come away from the conversation feeling closer to each other and with a deeper understanding of the other person's point of view. Living here has taught me to slow down in general. The French don't often use a tumble dryer. They take the time to put their clothes out on a rack and doing this actually helps them to live a slower and more mindful life. You have to pick up each piece and put it out, smelling the fresh laundry soap and feeling the textures and appreciating your clean clothes. It's a break. It's time to venture outside into the sunshine for a moment. And it really helps you to be present and connect for a few moments with the task at hand. This next French habit is one that I've personally gained a great deal of happiness and fulfillment from. The French don't seem to care so much about emphasising their physical beauty and staying forever young. In France, while there still is cosmetic surgery, it seems to be far less widely used and far less obvious than in a lot of other countries. French women still like to look nice and it's very important to them, but they do it in a, a particularly subtle way and with a lot of class. The goal isn't to look 20 years younger, it's to look like you've taken care of yourself and led a healthy life. And the French women I know don't seem to struggle with ageing, they seem to embrace it. Here, older French women are looked up to and admired. Many women that you see in media are well over 50 and there's no stigma attached to being older. I feel really grateful to be living in this culture as I get older because I think the French have a very healthy attitude towards ageing and it's comforting as you do get older to be surrounded by people that attach some value to that at least. It goes without saying that a huge part of the French culture and their source of happiness is what they eat. The French openly enjoy their food and it has a very central place in their daily life. People are often surprised by how many rich foods the French consume, especially here in Normandy where they eat a great deal of butter and cream. The key is that they do this in moderation. 
They don't feel any guilt or shame around eating pastries or croissants or bread. They know that these foods exist for their pleasure, and so they choose to simply enjoy them. There's no guilt. When I worked in an office with colleagues of different nationalities, the French always took their full lunch hour to get out and enjoy their meal. If the sun was shining, they'd make sure they got some fresh air and they'd take a walk in nature after eating. It was often my English or American colleagues who would grab a quick sandwich at their desk and choose to miss out entirely on their right to one full hour of pure pleasure in the middle of the day. The French actively take time off, again, without experiencing any feelings of guilt. They understand that it's their right and they understand the importance of that time off in order to recharge. There's a minimum of five paid weeks of holiday per year in France and people make sure that they take all of it. Many French people take the full month of August off. Now that I'm a self-employed artist, I have to plan my holidays into my agenda. And it's my French husband who reminds me the importance and necessity of taking time off. I recently took a trip to the mountains to visit a friend and I didn't think once about work while I was there. Taking that time off enriched my life with new memories and experiences and gave me a new perspective on my life and the part of France that I've made home. And I returned with a renewed sense of clarity about my purpose as an artist and why I paint what I do. As you've probably noticed during this video, I'm working hard at the moment on a collection of yacht paintings for the Monaco Boat Show in September. I think the next video that I'll make will be about the inspiration behind these paintings, why I feel the desire to paint these giant sailing ships and super yachts, so I'll be working on that for you for next time. These are just a few of the things that I feel like I've learned from the French since I moved to France 20 years ago. If you have any other questions you'd like me to answer about life in France, then feel free to pop them in the comments section below. I could literally talk about the French and France all day long, so go ahead if you have any questions. You don't have to move to France to find happiness. It really is a sort of lifestyle rather than a destination. And I think for me, one of the keys has actually been just having a goal to work towards, something that you're aiming for every day and that sort of gives you a reason to get out of bed in the morning, something that keeps your eye in the future. And for me, it has been my art career, but it could be anything at all that, you know, lights you up and makes you feel passionate. So yeah, work towards a goal. I don't think that achieving goals necessarily brings you happiness. It will bring you a rush the moment you achieve them and then you'll be thinking, okay, what next? So it really is sort of the day-to-day -day basis of working towards something rather than you know, constant achievements that will help you feel happier, I think. Thank you for being here. Thank you for staying through to the end. I hope you found this video um, interesting and if you did please give me a like and if you haven't already subscribed then please consider doing so. I will be painting quite a lot more yachts in the next few weeks and I'll be sharing that with you over on my Instagram so come and follow me on Danger Art on Instagram um, and I'll be making another video in a few weeks time for you because I have an awful lot of painting to be doing in the meantime. Um, so yeah, stick around and I'll see you again very soon. Thank you again for watching. Take care. Bye for now.